Welcome to today's Cruise and Cocktails. I would like to introduce the most phenomenal Mark Conrad who is with us today. It's a short, sharp Cruise and Cocktail questions and a few uh, odd questions thrown in there as well for you. So welcome and thank you very much for joining us, Mark. Thank you for having me and thank you for this beautiful cocktail that you made me. Beautiful and green. Yeah. It's the employable mimosa cocktail. It's so very, very tasty, thank you. It is very tasty. So while we're talking of cocktails, what is your favourite cocktail? Probably this one now. Okay, um, okay. I, I, don't, I don't drink, so it would, it's probably been about 10 years since I had a cocktail, but I think going back, recalling from memory, it was maybe and I think this is a non-alcoholic one as well. Charlie Temple? Oh, no idea. I think that's a non-alcoholic one, but that one was pretty good. I think a lot of them nowadays you can get alcohol and non-alcohol right, version. Because right. I, um, I know the Slug and Lettuce in Plymouth, they do a um, the Porn Star Marti Martini. Gotcha. But that's non-alcoholic as well. Right. So when you're driving on a night out, it's nice that you can, you can sit and have a cocktail yeah. and you feel like you're, you're you feel out. You feel you're part of the group rather than... Actually, yes. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So, okay, Mark, tell us a little about who you are and what you do. So, I think most importantly, I'm a born and bred Jana from okay. here in Plymouth. Um, born, raised in Plymouth. Joined the Royal Marines at 17, straight out of school. Finished my training at 18. Went on my first operation to Iraq at 19. Took a bit of a brief spell out at. I said 2006, I think I was about 22, to retrain as, okay. a, as a bodyguard. I yeah. kind of was looking at a career change. Um, failed miserably as a civilian, so rejoined the military um, with the intention of then finishing the, the rest of my 22 year career. That didn't quite go to plan. Uh, I got injured Christmas Eve 2007, okay. halfway through a tour of Afghanistan. So was medically discharged from the Marines in 2010. Okay. And then I've been on a bit of a wild ride. Okay. You know, having more children and exploring, you know, new careers, new jobs, new opportunities, um, and having a lot of fun along the way. It's been a wild ride. That's the key thing is having the fun. Absolutely. Having the fun. So what did you actually want to be when you were growing up? So this is interesting, right? Because I had no clue. Okay. Um, so I was born in the 80s, raised in the 90s. Big action movie fan. You know, Schwarzenegger, Stallone, Jean-Claude Van Damme, all these guys. Yeah. And as a young man growing up, looking up to these people, that I remember watching their movies thinking, that's kind of a bit of me. You know, but I, I didn't know much about the world and why I'm like 13, 14, you know, not even looking yeah. that far ahead. But it was when I got to like 15 and a half, and I knew that after my GCSEs, or before I'd finished my GCSEs, that I had to make these decisions and yes. figure out, am I going to college, do I want to go to uni, or do I want to jump straight into the big bad world and start a career? And all of my friends that I grew up with were like two or three years older than I was. So okay. they'd already finished school, they were already out doing their thing. And a bunch of them were in the military. And I think I had friends, at least one friend in, in every branch of the right, military. Okay. So I had a bit of a broad overview of, of what was what. And I think combining, you know, my love of those movies growing up and my, the stories my friends that were in the army were telling me when they were coming on leave yeah. kind of pushed me down the, the road of the military. Okay. And even, this is weird, and you know what it's like when you get older and you reflect and you look back yes. on your thought process as a kid. Even at that stage in my life, not sure what I wanted to do and, and what route I wanted to take. I knew that I needed a career, not just a job. I, yeah. I, I needed to start at the bottom of something and evolve myself over the years and grow and keep moving forward. I didn't want to just turn up every day at a nine to five, clock in, clock out, and 40 years down the line be doing the same thing. I needed yeah. to grow. I needed something that was going to affect me personally and professionally something that you can grow with as well yeah and then you come at the end of it and you look back and you're like damn that was a wild ride and yes. because of that i've developed more resilience or i've got these qualifications or i've had these experiences you know i, I knew even though i didn't really know what a, a career the difference was at the time between a career and a job i knew i needed something 
that was going to fulfill me and force me to grow, yeah. you know? Yeah, and that's a key thing as well. So in today's world, um, with everything that you're doing, what are the best parts of your job at the moment? What are the best things, what, what do you enjoy doing the most? I don't know what I enjoy doing the most, but what I enjoy most about the things I do is, is variety. Yeah. You know, I'm never in, you know, I just said, you know, turning up every day, nine to five, clock in, clock out. That, that to me, you know, some people that suits, and I, I say this with respect, but it, to me, that's a nightmare. Yes. And my life now is so different. You know, I, I work as a speaker, I'm writing books, I've got TV work coming up. I'm involved in charity work. I'm still training yeah. and, and evolving in physically and mentally. I just love the variety of being different places, meeting different people, doing different things, and challenging myself. You know, so some of the stuff that I'm fortunate enough to be involved in can at times be very uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, like speaking on a stage or networking with a bunch of high net worth individuals that's completely out of my comfort zone. And you kind of have to force yourself yes, you do. to do that, to grow into the person that's able to do that. And that's what I like. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just, I just feel very lucky that I get to do a lot of different things, meet a lot of different people, travel to a lot of different places and, and have a fulfilling career in life. OK. Um, talking about the challenges, what or who is your inspiration and motivation to, to keep going every day? So... I think this is the uh, the cliche go to that. So <laughs> yeah. It's got to be my kids and my family. I think, you know, as a father, you you're always trying to impart the best knowledge and wisdom on your kids that you can yeah. verbally. Yes. But when you put yourself in their shoes, you know, if if I'm telling them one thing, but they're watching me do something different, it sends a mixed message and they get yeah, confused. So I, I like to tell them but also try and show them. So that's why I get up every day and, and I wear my prosthetics. I don't use a wheelchair. I still train. I still have a career. I can very easily sit at home and do nothing, yeah. live off a pension and just, you know, coast through life. But I, that's not the message I want to send them. No, you know, I, I want agree. to show them. And I think, touch wood, and, and I hope, and I don't want to jinx it, but it's, it's paying dividends. I look at my eldest daughter now and the, the thing, especially in these last couple of days, what I've seen her doing, it makes me so proud. Yeah. Because she's doing stuff that I know is very uncomfortable to her. And to just sit back and watch her doing it, pushing out of her comfort zone, stepping up and being who she needs to be to do that, sends me a little bit of a, a message that I'm doing. It's a whole new outlook, isn't it? When you you know that you've created that within a person, you've created that push and that motivation and it's... Your, I suppose your teachings and what they're seeing around them mm. every day that yeah. it just gives you a better I think it, especially when it's your own children it gives you a bit more satisfaction to actually I mean you could do all the good in the world with everybody else but when it comes to your own children it's just that extra bit of yeah. glow that extra bit of specialness that, that comes yeah, through you, just, you know you just try and guide them don't you but they're the ones that have to put the graft in you know you can yes. what's the old saying you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink that's what makes me so proud it's like all i try and do is drop little nuggets here and there i never try and be that too overbearing and then i sit back and then when i see her and i know it takes a lot of courage to do some of the things she's doing when i see her doing it i'm straight on the text like try not to be too much of a <laughs> yeah. annoying dad but i'm like this is amazing what you're doing and i think through you know i'm gonna be 40 next year through the, my experiences and understanding of how certain things work i, I really Stuff that I wish I knew when I was 17, I'm trying to drip feed to, yes. to Kezia or my other two as they're younger, so they grow up understanding what's taken me 40 years to figure out. Yes. So hopefully it gives them a bit of a head start. It's a definitely a hard thing to do with children is you want to you want to give them all the wisdom and all the advice, but mm. you know sometimes they're going to dig their heels in as yes. well, which is, uh, yeah. which is a good battle to have. It's a good <laughs> yeah. battle to have. Yeah. I suppose on the sort of the flip side of that, with everything that's happened to you, um, in your life, do you have any regrets? Um, it's a bit of a think, tough one. It, it is, and as people have asked me that before, and, and I'm genuine when I say no, but it almost feels like people expect you to say no. 
because that's the, the thing you're supposed to say. But I, I honestly look back and, you know, losing three limbs was hard. And if you'd have asked me this within the first two, three months of my recovery, I would have said, yeah, I look yeah. at it a lot. But when you get older and you look back and you see the journey, the people you've met, the, the things you've got to experience that perhaps you wouldn't have had you not been forced down this path that, that you've been on, you look back and you think, well, I can't really have any regrets. And yeah. my life's in a great place now. And that's a culmination of everything good and bad along the way. I, I totally agree. I'm completely with you on that one. I'm mm. Everything that's happened to me in my life, it's put me to where I am today. Yeah, like exactly. you say, the good and the bad, mm. it, it leads you to who you are today. And yeah. there are times when you feel like just giving up and yeah. closing the curtains and spending mm -hmm. time in bed and all the rest of it. But... It's just all about getting up and carrying on. Yeah, which is and it sounds thing. it sounds corny, right? But even the people that that do you wrong along the path, right? At, in the moment, you're so angry and, fr and you're like, "How could they do this?" And, yeah, you know, and it happens to all of us, like numerous times in our life. But then when you look back, you're like, "No, that was good because I grew from that experience, and now I won't make that mistake again." You know, it may it's going to force me to be a different person to look at things in a different way. But it doesn't mean I have to be a bad person if I come across a situation like that again. I just know how to handle it differently. Yes. And ultimately, you know, learning the lesson is, is the main prize, yeah. you know, and not, yeah. not repeating the mistake. No, and we sometimes repeat them, but not necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, I'd like to say that we learn all the time, but sometimes we don't. Yeah, I know. So what advice would you give to somebody who's just starting out in their career or maybe transitioning out of a career into a new career? What what bit of advice would you give somebody? <clears throat> Plan it. Take it seriously. Okay. The first five years of my career in, in the Marines, and I don't regret this, was drinking, partying, fighting, being one of the, I was you know, 18 yeah. years old, just doing what young lads do. But when I left and rejoined, my mindset was different, and, and I had a plan. Okay. Now, I, was, I was perfectly willing the first time around to coast through and just you know hope I got promoted and hope I could go on this course but when I rejoined I had a solid plan of right this is what I want to do I want to come back from this tour I want to go straight on a junior command course I want to get promoted I want to change my job bam 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 and I wish I'd done that from the beginning yes um because without a plan you, you will just coast and yeah. I think the worst thing ever if I was to go back and start again is to get 22 years down the line of a career and be like I could have done so much more yeah but I just took it as it came rather than having the courage to stand in front of my boss and go this is what I want boss you know can you make it happen because if they don't know then they're not going to be able to help you do no it. and nine times out of ten they've got the experience to help you get to that they can say well actually now I know what you want yeah we can help you achieve exactly. that instead of going not knowing what you want or anything yeah. and you're just plodding along they're kind of plodding along whereas no, I agree with that. It's... And have a bit of courage too, you know. But early in my career, like in, in, the, in the Royal Marines, I can't speak for any other career, but back then it took an average of eight to ten years just to become a corporal. Okay. Because there are so few men in the Marines. I was six and a half thousand at the time and everyone's fighting for promotion. Yeah. So every year you get your rapport and that's going to tell you whether you're on track. And I remember very early in my career, probably three years in, I ended up in a situation where I was doing a corporal's job with no training and no support. And then when my report time, and I did very good at it, I don't, I'm not even, you know, I don't feel arrogant for saying that. Yeah. I, I worked hard and, and turned this thing around and did, and did a good job. And when my report came, the, the weird thing in the Marines is like, you change drafts every two and a half to three years. The guy that had been watching me for the last 18 months moved on. Okay. So my new boss had been there four weeks and wrote me a substandard report. Right. And I didn't have the courage to go, excuse agree. me, sir, I don't agree with that. This is what I've done. This, I just kind of said, yes, sir, thank you, sir, and turned around and left. Right. So I could have been on, if I had the courage, the promotion train very early, and my career would have took a different trajectory. Yeah. But I didn't have the bra I wasn't brave enough to go, sir, I don't agree with that. Can we review it? This is what I've done, and I just accepted it. So, yeah, you know, plan it and, and have the courage to to stand up when you feel it's right and, and speak your piece. Okay, cool. Okay, so what is one thing that people are surprised to find out about you? Um, 
Is there anything that you sometimes tell people and they're a bit shocked or surprised? Yeah, no, about I, sometimes I make a joke, like if I'm in my car, I'm, like, I'm just going to go and stick on my Backstreet Boys album and drive home and they laugh. And I'm like, I'm not joking. Yeah, I'm it's like, just like I'm doing if, it. The music <laughs> yeah. I listen, if, they, if they knew the music I listened to, that would surprise them. Um, I know most people know most about me, you know, born and bred in Plymouth, former Royal Marine. Um, I'm pretty boring, I think. But a Backstreet Boy lover, so that's I love it. I love, I love the 90s boy band. No, no, I'm fine. My, 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 I did have this conversation with Anna, actually, the office manager, because my children are going to their dad's for Christmas. Okay. And she says, um, something about being on my own. I said, no, because it means I can shove Disney tunes on and mm. decorate the house and sing along mm -hmm. to as many Disney songs as I want without, Absolutely. without my teenagers moaning that yeah. I've got Disney playing. Absolutely. I'm, I, do, I do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's all good fun. Right. So those are sort of the serious type questions. Okay. So now, if you're going to live on a desert island and can take only one thing, what would it be? Does this include food and water? Or? That's already on the, the island. So, so if you like so one either one um, one one thing. So whatever you would have the most one commodity that you would take with you, maybe Netflix. Netflix. That that's my escapism is, is movies. I'm a, a big. Are you a binge man. watcher as well? Uh, okay. Not always. Okay. I, I binge watched that Game of Thrones when it got to like series six, and it was very confusing. Okay. Um, so I don't tend to binge much, but it's always been my thing. Like I said when I was a kid, is you know some people like to go out partying and drinking. Some people go into nature. I, I love movies. That's how I escape and, Just and, shut and off. detox. So if I'm on a desert island on my own, going out of my mind, Just you know something the best thing to... I could do is is escape for a brief period of time and. You know, watch a movie and use my imagination a little. You yeah, know. yeah, in that fantasy millionaire world that. That's is. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is okay. So, if you were to have a movie created about your life, Ooh. who would you like to play you in the movie? <sighs> Which part of my life? Oh, now that's a question I've not been asked. So, it would. Well, I suppose you could pick which part you wanted it. Whether it would be your. Younger years, or whether it would be now. See, it's funny because you know. Maybe we could have a, a two movie episode here. We could have a. Like in, what's that movie? Maybe it's the Green Mile when they're old and they're talking about yeah. So you yes. got two two versions. Of... That's it. So you can have two. Uh, there you go. You've got two actors now to. to you've um, just made it harder for yourself by having to select two oh, actors no, now. I don't know. Um, I think if it was a younger version of me, somebody like. Taron Egerton or Joe Cole, yeah, uh, some other, someone like that. Um, potentially with my life now, um, we, were, we were talking about next door. Um, Tom Hardy, he's a, he's a friend um, okay. that that I work with. He's a cool guy. Um, you know, someone of that era. Yeah. Um, just trying to think who else there is. All the guys I grew up idolising are a lot older now. So yes, no. It's... Maybe okay. So if you go, if you're gonna go push into the future when I'm an old man in a car home, you know we'll get Stallone or or Schwarzenegger. Or oh, someone. the classics, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Okay, if you've got the world's attention for thirty seconds, what would you say? What would your message be? I would tell the entire human race to almost stand up, shake themselves off, and remember what we're capable of as human beings. I, I see so many people nowadays, like I, I drive around and everyone looks like beaten down and defeated. And you know, when I have conversations with people, it's almost like in the last five plus years, people, human beings have had the confidence just ripped out of yeah. them. And I just want to remind people like we're the most adaptable and resilient creatures on the planet. We can operate in any environment on the on the planet, desert, jungle, woodland, Arctic, whatever it is. We can be in the sea, on the land, up mountain, and all this stuff. And you read all these incredible books about people that have just achieved unbelievable things and it reminds you what human beings can do. But everyone just seems like defeated at the minute. And I just I would love to just say, listen, you need to remember what, what humans are capable of. Go out and get whatever it is you've got in your head, your dream, your fantasy, your goal. Just go out and do it because go we can. It. You know, maybe not always on our own. We need support and help along the way, undoubtedly. But just 
relate that spark in people and, and let them realise what they're capable of. Yeah, definitely. So it is hard times at the moment. It, mm. is, it is hard. Okay, the last and most important question yep. for this. If you could have any superpower, what mm. would it be? Just one. One superpower. Oh, goodness. Um, the power of manifestation. Okay. So I just think about what I want to happen and boof, it happens. It happens. Yeah. That would be powerful. That, yeah, that definitely would be powerful. That or laser eyes, so I can zap it. <laughs> yeah. And cut me up in traffic, I'll pop their tyres with my laser vision or something. No, I like that one better, actually. <laughs> That one definitely driving around Plymouth. I could do that one a yeah. few times. Yeah. No, but that that would be cool if you could just you know, almost imagine something, whether it's a scenario or a physical object or something, and just boof, make it happen. Yeah. That'd be cool. Perfect. That's great. Thank you very much for taking time out today and chatting My to me. My pleasure. Thank and you for the cocktail. Cheers. cheers.